Can you see what is another big advantage of this circuit, even though it was inefficient, but the big advantage that we at this point introduce is what? I want you to see all the sequence. So let's introduce diode. What I did here, now there are two diodes. So I reverse the direction of two diodes. And what happens? Now you get a positive output. Absolutely. Nice. And could you do that with any other converter? Then you have two versions, positive output and negative output. How good is that? Very. Isn't that great? Yes. But it's actually worse than the previous one. Why? I'll show you why. Because now, if you do this, for, for this other uh, effect, if you do this, what happens? This capacitor is charging in a positive direction. Yep. Charge. And in negative direction, discharge. Oops. How's, how is this great? You're sorting the capacitance. Do you, have you ever done that? You have a 100 volt uh, capacitor charge and you put a, a short circuit across it, boom, big spark, right? That's right. the energy stored in it. So you, di you dissipate all the energy you stored, right? Yep. That's no good, right? No. Nope. But at least this was good. The single converter, positive input can generate positive output and negative output. Great, just change the direction. Or actually, you don't have to change the direction. What you do is just put the, remember, I told you. When you change the direction, you have a common common uh, ground. But if you don't change the direction, you just put a ground on a, on the negative side. <laughs> That's all, right? But in any way, I showed you how, <coughs> how you have polarity inversion in a single converter. Okay. Now, <coughs> anybody has an idea, and now for a second, turn it to the gallery. Anybody has an idea how we can fix that? Basically, you... In the discharging cycle, you were shorting the inductor, right? So the energy was dissipating, actually. Yes. So what I was trying to say, if we have a, a small uh, inductance with the, in series with that capacitor to create a resonance. Okay. Uh, Next question, would you put their capacitors? And I'll, I'll put it here with my pen here. Can you put it in this? You apparently want to put it in a discharge room when this capacitor blew, when we discharge, right? Right. So someplace in this loop, you can put this capacitor. And let's uh, figure it out where this would be appropriate. Can we, can we put it here? Would the circuit work OK uh, if I put the resonant inductor here? So it's now discharged in a resonant way. And we explained that is non dissipated, right? Yes, no, maybe. I don't, no, maybe. I, I don't know. Oh, okay. Work. That's the first one. That's like where people vote in the Congress. They are those undecided votes. You know? so yeah, that's, I, I don't know. You're undecided. Okay, I, Dave is undecided. What about Kendra? You you came up with a great idea. Uh, uh, I think so. It is uh, not a good idea uh, because maybe uh, on the when the negative cycle starts, then diode will be cut off, right? So, may... so you. You, uh, you have a, a good uh, reason to not believe it's a good place, but yes. it's not correct. Good, raise, good reason is you, you suspect because this is a switch. I think to explain your, uh, uh, further why you have doubts about this position is because if this diode turns on while the current is still uh, uh, present in this uh, resonant inductor, that's bad because you cannot turn off uh, the inductor current because it's going to be a big spark, you know, because uh, inductor current doesn't want to uh, change the current. That's part of this Lenz law, whatever Faraday's Lenz law and so on. So that is a first question. However, your worry is correct, but at the wrong place. If I put an uh, inductor here, that is the wrong place, definitely. Why? Because if you put the resonant, any kind of inductor here, the moment you turn a switch on, you're going to have a here current, but maybe it can start even at zero current. But at some point, you're going to turn off the switch and turn in this loop. When you turn this off switch, that forces this diode to turn off, and suddenly 
this uh, energy stored in this inductor has no way to go. And what's going to go? You, what it's going to do? Sudden change of the inductor current from going flowing to nothing. It's a big change of inductor current, which causes a big spark. Is going to kill this switch. You see? So yeah. you cannot put it in active switch. But is there any problem putting it in a, in a in a passive switch? No, really, because oh. the diode diode is conducting. It says, I I get the order to conduct as long as in the inductor uh, flows. Right. You see, resonance comes down to, this is switching instances, and this is zero current. Resonance comes to zero. You can turn off and on. So you turn on, then it's turned on during this period. When you turn off this period, the current is zero because that's at the moment when this current comes to zero, this diode turns off and uh, nothing, uh, no problem. Uh, and uh, because this circuit will have a DC current, whatever uh, in this and have a induced by the DC load, this is DC current. And it'll have a resonance, but the resonance will be twice the peak. Remember how that? So therefore, you have a two I. And what happens? This resonant current will essentially say that this inductance will because there is a listen. If I think about this circuit LC, LC has only one resonance, one frequency. It is not uh, how you say attenuated sine wave so on. It's a sine wave. And the such sine wave at the top of this V, it has to start at zero. And, and so this circulating current starts at zero and end up at zero, okay? So therefore, uh, this is okay. Uh, but is there any better position where you can put this uh, resonant inductor?